Forget your comfort zone. Our ancestors were thrown into an unrecognizable world where every step was a duel. Every night, a fiery test against beasts and the cold. They had no GPS, they had no roadmap, just absurd courage and extraordinary intelligence. They initiated the riskiest expansion in history, the first time humanity left Africa. But the question that will shock you is, how the hell did they manage to survive and conquer? In Extincto Doc, we're going to show you the most incredible secrets and the most ingenious tactics of this epic conquest. If you also have the soul of an explorer, smash that like button below and subscribe to the Extincto Doc channel. Hit the bell so you don't miss any details of this absurd story. Let's go. The first great migration saga out of Africa wasn't ours, Homo sapiens. It was that of a much older and equally impressive ancestor, Homo erectus. Emerging almost two million years ago, they were a true walking revolution. Unlike their predecessors, who still had more ape-like features and less efficient locomotion, Homo erectus possessed a body much more similar to ours, modern in its biomechanics, taller, with long legs and narrow hips, perfectly adapted for walking and running long distances with an energy efficiency never before seen. The famous Turkana boy fossil, found in Kenya, shows us an almost complete skeleton of a young Homo erectus who, had he reached adulthood, would have been over six feet tall, a remarkable feat for the time and a crucial adaptation for life on the open savanna. And their brains? They were significantly larger than those of previous hominins, which gave them new capabilities for planning, cooperation, and complex problem solving. They weren't just accidental travelers, carried by chance. They were the first purposeful explorers of our lineage, the first to truly deserve the title of global travelers. They were the pioneers who ventured into the unknown, changing the map of hominin distribution forever. For a long time, science wondered, when and why, after all, did they leave? Theories were numerous, but the surprisingly ancient answer came from an unexpected place, Dmanisi, Georgia. There, at an archaeological site that rewrote the initial chapters of human evolutionary history, Homo erectus skulls, dated to an astonishing 1.8 million years ago, were found. This was a complete shock to the scientific community and changed the timeline of human dispersal. Why? Because these Dmanisi hominins had relatively small brains for the species and used very simple Aldovan stone tools, more primitive than the Acheulean hand axes that Homo erectus would later develop and use. This showed us, categorically, that the Great Migration out of Africa did not require gigantic brains or super-advanced technology. It required something more fundamental. Necessity, opportunity, and perhaps the pressure from other hominin groups emerging in Africa. The discovery of five skulls in Dmanisi also revealed a wide variation in size and shape among individuals suggesting that Homo erectus was an incredibly diverse and adaptable species from the beginning of its journey, a key factor in its success in different environments. But what in fact led them on this seemingly suicidal journey, so far from home, across unknown landscapes and with such simple tools? The most recent research, with climate modeling and isotope analysis, suggests that the answer is not a single one, but a complex combination of factors. First, the climate. Africa was experiencing increasingly pronounced cycles of droughts and rains, and these climatic changes may have pushed groups out in search of more stable environments with more predictable resources. Second, food. Homo erectus was an extremely adaptable omnivore, by following the migrations of large herds of herbivorous animals, which were their main source of food and protein, they simply kept walking, crossing landscapes, 
and without realizing the map they were drawing, they were already on a new continent. They were hunter-gatherers, and the search for new hunting and gathering territories, free from competition, was a constant necessity. Additionally, the ability to run long distances allowed them to pursue and exhaust prey more efficiently, a technique called persistence hunting. But they had no compass. They had no maps. They didn't know the brutal challenges, the deadly predators, and the landscapes that awaited them. Leaving Africa meant entering a completely alien world. The temperate forests of Europe and the vast frozen steppes of Asia were kingdoms of animals they had never seen or hunted. The megafauna was colossal and dangerous. Even fiercer and more specialized predators than those they left behind, such as the cave lion and the cave bear, competed for the same shelters and the same prey. And the prey? They were gigantic. Mammoths, woolly rhinos, giant elk. Hunting them with simple tools required insane new strategies, impeccable group cooperation, and unmatched courage. Adapting to these new climates, especially the harsh and prolonged winters that Homo erectus encountered in Asia, at sites like Jokudan, China, and Manisi, Georgia, was a monumental challenge that required the development and mastery of fire control to survive. Cut marks on bones in Manisi and other sites in Asia show us that the meat and fat of large animals were essential to sustain the large brain and body adapted for walking in the cold. But how do you survive in a place where you don't know the poisonous plants, where the winter can last for months and freeze everything, and where you're no longer the smartest predator around? The answer lies in the next great wave of migration. Ours. Hundreds of thousands of years later, a new species, born and forged in Africa, was ready to retrace that journey, and this time, to definitively conquer the world with no turning back. We, Homo sapiens. The great wave of migration out of Africa, which began around 70,000 years ago, was different. It was a game changer. Our journey was not just a territorial expansion. It was a conquest driven by innovation, creativity, and especially abstract thought. And our secret weapon? It wasn't just physical. It was the mind, our brain, with its incredible capacity to create, imagine, and plan. Recent research, highlighted in articles from 2023 to 2025 and analysis of marine sediments, has revealed an incredible secret that made this exodus possible, the Green Sahara. At various times, due to changes in Earth's orbit, the famous Milankovitch cycles and monsoons, the Sahara Desert temporarily transformed into a vast savanna with rivers, lakes, and abundant fauna. This created a green corridor of access that allowed our ancestors to leave Africa more easily without the need to cross a deadly desert. Other groups followed so-called coastal superhighways, true resource highways, living off the rich resources of the sea, fish, mollusks, crustaceans, as they rapidly spread along the coasts of Asia and the Arabian Peninsula. This coastal route offered a constant and predictable food source, rich in omega-3, a superfood that allowed for a much faster and safer expansion eastward. The exploitation of these marine and coastal resources is now seen as a crucial factor that drove the cognitive development of Homo sapiens, making us even smarter, like a real-time mental upgrade. And we had an arsenal of innovations that radically differentiated us from any previous species. Our technology was lighter, more precise, and much more diverse, based on long, thin flakes that resembled scalpels. We used sharp stone blades, aerodynamic spear points, and, crucially, throwing weapons like the atlatl, which allowed us to hunt from a distance with much greater safety and efficiency, drastically reducing the risk of injuries from direct confrontation with large animals. But the biggest difference was our symbolic thinking. We created art, music, adornments. We painted cave walls, carved figurines, and wore necklaces of shells and teeth. 
Our language was complex and abstract, allowing for detailed planning, cooperation, and knowledge transmission on a scale never before seen. This ability to create culture, to share stories, to formulate complex strategies, and to communicate about the future and the past was the key to adapting to any environment, from scorching deserts to frozen tundras, ensuring success where Homo erectus had stopped. We became evolution's cheat code with style. But the greatest proof of our ingenuity, the feat that defies our understanding and seems like something out of the craziest sci-fi movie was yet to come, the conquest of Australia. For Homo erectus, who had already conquered Asia as far as Indonesia, the sea was an insurmountable barrier and the limit of their navigation technology. They simply had no way. But for us, Homo sapiens, it was just another epic challenge to overcome, another frontier for us to break. How did our ancestors reach a continent that was never connected to Asia, even at the peaks of the Ice Age, when sea levels were lower? They navigated. In one of the most incredible and daring feats of prehistory, groups of Homo sapiens, using primitive rafts, probably made of bamboo or wood tied with plant fibers, crossed tens of kilometers of open sea on a journey that required long-range vision, logistical planning, and above all, faith in the unknown. They had no compasses, no maps, just the observation of the stars, currents, and the brutal courage to launch themselves into the unknown, trusting each other. They island-hopped on a journey that lasted generations until they reached Australia, and science proves it. The archaeological site of Majed Bebe in northern Australia has evidence of human occupation from at least 65,000 years ago. This is tens of thousands of years earlier than previously thought, and much earlier than the colonization of Europe. This was not an accident, a random drift. It was an intentional and highly organized migration, which required planning, knowledge of the seas, of the stars, and a courage that defies our imagination. They were the first great navigators in history, the true pioneers of maritime exploration. And upon arrival, they found a strange new world with unique megafauna, such as the Diprotodon, a wombat the size of a hippopotamus, and the Megalania, a giant monitor lizard like an Australian Godzilla, and adapted to survive and thrive in this new and challenging continent, becoming the first to extinguish the megafauna of an entire continent a giant impact that would change the ecology forever. The saga of the first human migrations is more than a story of survival. It is the story of our essence, of what makes us human. We have the blood of explorers, the insatiable curiosity to know what lies beyond the hill, and the brilliant intelligence to adapt to any challenge the planet throws at us. Every person alive today, anywhere in the world, is a direct descendant of these brave travelers. The courage to look to the horizon, to the unknown, and simply go, is what defines us as a species. And this journey, begun almost two million years ago in African savannas with Homo erectus and consolidated by us, Homo sapiens, is not yet over. It is our deepest and most exciting legacy. If this epic journey of world conquest has inspired you and made you reflect on the incredible resilience and brutal courage of our ancestors, then smash that like button on this video now. Share it with all your friends who love adventure and prehistory so more people can uncover this fantastic story. And of course, if you're not yet part of our tribe and want to continue unearthing the deepest secrets of our planet, subscribe to Extincto Doc and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our next discoveries. And now, we want to hear from you in the comments. Which of these migratory journeys, Homo erectus to Georgia or Homo sapiens to Australia, did you find most impressive and why? And what other mystery of prehistory do you want us to unravel in the next video? Your opinion is essential for us to continue exploring together. Thank you very much for joining us on this trip to the past, and see you in the next Extincto Doc video.